informational video here as I'm holding this puppy. This is a sweet puppy that's almost eight weeks old. So talk about eight weeks old, he's licking me. Look at him, how sweet he is. Um, hi. You get a cute eight week old puppy at home, comes home to you and for the first few days, and he thinks I'm his mother. For the first few days, everything goes pretty smoothly and then the puppy settles in and the puppy starts doing this. The puppy starts pushing against every new pack member. Every new pack member, the puppy pushes because the puppy needs to know who's the smartest, who's the strongest, who's the bravest, who's the fastest in the litter. They have to know because no matter how much we try to make them human, which I don't recommend, they're not. They're pack animals and they're dogs, and so they have to know. So when the puppy pushes against your children, at six months old, this puppy's going to be 60 plus pounds. The puppy's going to win. So if you allow your children to play with the puppy, the puppy's going to take the children as their siblings, and that is not a good idea for a working guard dog because, see how sweet this boy is. Um, they're going to push against your children because, so I, I've had people say this, and this is an erroneous thought. Oh, I'm going to have my six-year-old turn the puppy over and stand over him. <laughs> Give it up. A 120, 130, 140 pound bull mastiff is not going to believe that your six year old is smarter, braver, stronger, or faster than they are. Nor could your six year old protect. You know, the puppy understands the six year old cannot protect them. So it's not about the children being dominant over the puppy, it's about the fact that if you will not allow the puppy to interact or play with the children or take the children as their sibling then the puppy will respect the children when the puppy is an adult. But if you let the puppy, if you think that these guys are just gonna roll around the floor and work it out, you're thinking Disneyland and that's not reality. That's just not reality. Look how sweet this guy is. What you doing, hmm? And then of course X's is always in my lap. And so we have Got some potty over on the paper, and I'm going to go over there and clean that up. Hi, you in my lap again? Susan's just going to eat you up like a piece of chocolate. Mm -hmm. So another thing I'd like to talk about is, which she is, um, overindulging your puppy. So consistency, consistency, consistency. Please say it with me. If you let the puppy on the couch as a puppy, they're gonna feel entitled to get on the couch as an adult. Which I don't care if you let them on the couch or not, I don't recommend it if you have small children because it puts the puppy eye level with children and they think they're, they're, think they're equal or above the children. But if you don't have children, you want your dog on the couch, I don't care. But just don't tell them, bad dog, one day and let them get up there the next. That's not fair, you're not being consistent with your puppy. Um, if you allow or encourage unwanted behavior, guess what you're gonna get? More unwanted behavior. So I had a text from someone that got a puppy from, what was that last litter that went home? Hannah Bear, Hannah Bear's mm -hmm. litter. And he said the puppy's nipping at him. And I said, that's not okay. So we need to fix this. He said, the puppy's just teething. I said, not on you, he's not. You, the puppies don't teeth on us. No, no, they don't. That's not okay, we, we can't allow that. So, it's true, it's no, don't teeth on people. Because I didn't. So they're so adorable at this age and then they're not so adorable at six months. If you allow them to teeth on you at 10 weeks old, they're going to teeth on you at six months old. So do not encourage unwanted behavior. Hi. Don't put that. 